Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making a quick and simple vise. Uh, this is one that I've wanted to make for a while because, well, I want to be making a clock here and working on some gears. Now, if you've ever watched Clickspring, he uses a, uh, a gear vise like this a uh, lot. It's great for small pieces anytime you want to rechange things around. He also has a collar on his to keep it together. Um, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. It's made out of hickory and we're going to be having a little bit of fun. So let's dive in and make ourselves a little vice. Today we're going to be working with hickory and it is another really interesting wood. Very, very difficult to work with, uh, especially with hand tools. Very stringy, very coarse, will dull tools quickly, but it has a lot of rigidity and a good spring in it. Um, but you can use just about anything you want, whether it be oak or ash or walnut or even pine or uh, plywood would work fine for this. You just need a couple long sticks about three inches wide or as wide as your jaw needs to be. And then I made mine about uh, 30 inches long. So I'm going to cut two pieces at about 30 inches long and they're about a half inch thick. And then I need a couple pads. So these are going to end up being about two inches by the width of the board. So I'm just cutting off a couple extra scraps that are two inches long. We need two of these, one for each of the two jaws. So mark those out, cut them off, and then we can uh, start gluing these jaws on here. Now for this project, I normally would use something like Type Bond 2, but I was in a bit of a rush and I needed to get this made. So I tried, decided to actually use uh, super glue for gluing most of this up. It just allows me to get at it really quickly. And as long as it's done well, it's actually an incredibly strong, strong glue. Uh, if you haven't seen my glue test on that, definitely worth taking a look at. So I'm gonna be using a 2P10 gel. Um, it's a really, really good glue. It gloops on there and it gives you a good bit of working time. Um, so I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to work these two pieces together make sure I get a good thick covering on both of them. And then hit some activator on the other side. And then when I put these on, they're basically locked in place. I just want to make sure I squeeze them as quickly as possible. And there, it's done. So the next thing I want to do is put an angle on this. You see how these are, are touching at the bottom but not at the top. Um, so we're actually going to be chamfering the bottoms of them so they touch up nicely. But before we do that, we're just going to clean them all up and smooth them. And you can see how well the... Uh, the, the super glue actually holds on. You can still plane against them without breaking one of the pieces off. It uh, actually works really well. Chamfer the edges, make them look pretty. Um, you know how much I like chamfering. <laughs> and it's always fun to actually uh, to do it with a chisel and get a nice clean edge. So smooth them all out and have a, a good bit of time here. Uh, I, I tried to figure out how to chamfer the insides so those two jaws would touch. Um, and I played with a whole bunch of issues, a whole bunch of different methods from chiseling to um, using a plane or locking the plane in the bench and then um, running the board over the plane. But I found it's just easy to stick it like this and go to town, start from one side and kind of judge the angle until you view it about right. And it really, I was surprised it took me like a minute and a half each side and it was done. Um, just eyeballing the angle got me pretty close. For the jaws on this, I'm going to be covering them with a little bit of cork. Uh, this will just keep them a little bit softer, so I'm not going to be denting up the, the wood that I use. Um, just a, Actually, these were uh, cork boards that you can get at the uh, school supply store that come in one foot by one foot blocks. I think I actually bought these at Menards a while ago. Um, but I use them for odd projects here, here and there, so it's always good to have some cork available. So smear the super glue on and then clamp them down. You can see how there's a little bit of gap at the bottom, and that's fine because I'm going to be putting larger pieces in, but you can easily squeeze that out and get a nice pressure all the way across. Now I'm just going to wait for that super glue to set up, hit with a little bit of activator, and we can go on. Ooh, the chisel off. <laughs> this is the fun part. <laughs> so we can uh, clean it off, and basically that is the vise. The only thing we don't have is a way to attach it at the bottom, so right now they're just two separate jaws that have to be held in the vise. You can get an idea here how it is actually supposed to work. Brings it up a little bit closer to working height so you're not bent over looking at it hard. Um, you can put it whatever height you want and wherever you want in the vise. Particularly for doing the file work on these gears or any small things, it makes it very easy to lift it up so you can actually see what you're working on and get very accurate with your, your files. Okay. So I'm going to flip it upside down and I want to attach the two pieces together. So I'm going to put two dowels in just to hold them in place. Now whenever you're working with dowels, it's best to drill a test hole. And so we're going to drill a test hole and then drive a dowel in. Uh, but I wanted to try one that was the exact size of the dowel as well as then shaping the dowel down a little bit smaller. 
Here I'm paring off the end with a knife to make sure that the blade isn't going to hit your thumb. It's uh, my, my thumb is down where the guard is at. I'm going to drive it through a dowel plate. If you haven't seen a dowel plate, I have a, a video on this. It allows you to size the dowel so you can get an exact size. So I can test the dowel plated dowel that's down a size and then the regular size one and see which one is more the way I want. So I picked the one that was a nice tight fit in there. Once I got the auger bit and the dowel size that I wanted, uh, it was time to drill the actual holes. You drill through from one side um, until the auger tip just comes out the other side, and then you can turn around and drill from the other side. That way you get a really nice clean hole. Here you can see the auger tip coming out, and I'll touch, ooh, it's there. So I'll back it out and then drill from the other side, and you get a really nice clean sharp edge. Put in some of the gel into the hole, Put it onto the dowel as well, and then drive the dowel down in place. And that's about it. Hit with a little bit of activator, let it sit for a few seconds, and then we can come off and uh, trim these off. From this point on, it's just about making this thing look pretty. Uh, it doesn't really have to be. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, a tool. Uh, it just has to function. Uh, but in this case, this is actually leftover scraps I had from making trim on my house, and so that's why uh, one side is actually stained and finished, um, and the other sides aren't because they were, well, they were trim. So we can trim them off with a flush cut saw, and then plane them down, nice and smooth and pretty like. And then it it, it, it it feels good because it's, it's smooth, but it doesn't really look good because I just cleaned all of the finish off. So, oh well. <laughs> but here you can see how it works. It just goes in the top here, and then the vise is in place, uh, so I can I can work on it. And uh, for the actual testing of it, we put our, our first gear in here. You just slide it to the spot you're looking for, line it up, and then just drop it down into the vise, and the vise locks it in place. And then depending upon the opening I have in the vise is how high this is up and down. If I close the vise up, then it's higher up to me, and if I open the vise up, then it goes lower down. And we can just focus on hitting these teeth. And I'm going to be doing this for a while because I have a lot of teeth to make this clock work. <laughs> you can see how close and accurate you can actually get because you can view this until that black line just disappears and that's what we're looking for. If you need something a little more secure, you can just put your knee up against the bottom and it holds it in place really nicely. Another tool that I'm really happy with. Oh yeah, look at those clogs. Aren't those pretty? There you have it. This sucker is uh, is kind of fun. It, it's fast and efficient. I can um, put the, uh, the gears in here very quickly clamp it down, slide it down into my regular vise on the bench, um, and it goes really, really quickly for that. Um, the reason I'm doing it like this, putting it into another vise, um, is I like being able to slide it up and down in the vise. If you go over to Clickspin's video, and I'll try to leave a link to that down below, he actually has a collar that goes on his that slides up, um, and he just puts it against the, uh, the bench with his knee. It works really, really well that way. Um, I just wanted to actually use the, the vise on mine. Now the other way I've done it in the past is I actually use a hand screw and I'll clamp one of the two jaws into the vise and then I'll just adjust the gear clamping with the other handle and this will allow me to do small parts in here. But this doesn't give me quite as much adjustability and it doesn't give me the clamping size I want. Uh, with something like this I can work on a very very small gear as well as a larger gear. Um, and I can quickly bounce back and forth between those. So that's why we ended up making this one. So I hope you like this. If you do have any questions or ideas, things you think I could have done better, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to read those. If you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Think about becoming a patron on Patreon. Those things really do help out and they keep this channel going. Thank you for that. And I think that's it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Don't tell my wife, but there's another vice in my life. <laughs>